What's going on workforce? Brian here and we have a lot of content to cover. Live Letter 41 just wrapped up and producer director Yoshi P and Foxclon showed off a ton of you know content. Now we already really knew what was coming. So obviously the first typical part of any live letter uh, that's kind of a part two summarizes what was said in part one. And then obviously the focus of the part two is showing actually those systems. So usually we get a high level overview and this one is a deep dive. So the real exciting part was the live letter opened with the trailer for patch 4.2. And whether you want to call it Doom Train or Phantom Train, we're fighting a train. <laughs> and this is really, from what they showed off, it looks very uh, similar to uh, the Phantom Train of Final Fantasy VI. In fact, there is a so much, there is a so much, that's great English, Brian. Uh, there is so much Final Fantasy VI wrapped up into Sigma Scape for Omega. It just boggles my mind. Now it appears that like Omega is playing a game with us. That these are just obviously illusions. So this is not going to be obviously the real Phantom Train from Six. Those they're not going to be necessarily lore connected, but it's still fun to imagine and to have uh, <laughs> some fun with this. And ultimately, it looks like the boss of Sigma Scape is none other than Kefka. And this, by far, is thank you. Thank you, Yoshi P. This is great. Final Fantasy VI is one of my all-time favorite Final Fantasy uh, titles. In fact, it's one of the ones that I've really hoped that they re remake properly. But we're not going to talk about that here on this video. So high-level uh, view of this, we're just going to try to hit the notes, show it off. They showed off Biako, the fight. Yoshi P went in and basically did a suicide run, uh, picked a fight solo as a black mage, which obviously never goes over too well. But the, the modeling looks incredible. So he's obviously this this lion or, you know, probably actually, excuse me, tiger. And then he has a tiger arm and he's just this big ultimate boss. So that's, it looks like it's going to be a fun primal uh, fight in and of itself. Doom Train seems to be the first uh, battle of Sigma Scape. You know, we know real, uh, you know, so much reveal uh, on all the other bosses, but we do know Kefka is going to be there. They do mention that the maintenance is actually going to be 24 hours uh, this time for this patch, but the housing cell of housing is not going to go live. And hopefully this is a, yes, and these updates are going to help relieve a lot of housing changes. So they kind of, they go into that. So uh, first the housing are, you know, are going to go up for sale right away. Second, you can only have uh, one house uh, for your free company and one house for your personal uh, per world, AKA server uh, per account. So you can't, uh, you know, make another character go back onto your same world and get another house anymore. So that's going away. Uh, the, 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 when they ever, you go to like sell your house, there's going to be a cooldown, but there's not going to be that cooldown on transfer, which is interesting in and of itself, but he's hoping that these changes are going to help, uh, alleviate some of the, you know, people trying to spike the market and mess with you know, and then obviously the rush of trying to get in when the servers go live after maintenance, you know, trying to alleviate that. And they're also adding in 1400 new plots. Uh, for housing, and this is across all the housing districts. So a lot more land uh, coming in uh, for purchase, and then obviously these restrictions. Now, no word, they didn't really go into if like you own more than one house, uh, if that's gonna be taken away. They didn't mention it specifically, so I'd actually venture to bet that they're not going to retroactively start like repossessing houses, uh, but there are those changes going forward, I think have been probably needed for a long time. Uh, it's important, you know, I, I really want the housing issue or crisis to kind of go away because it seems to be something that always comes up. And I really want people to be able to get the housing they want. Personally, I think that if they added gardening to your apartment options, that would take a huge amount of pressure off of trying to acquire a house. He did also say that like free companies have to have at least four active members to be able to purchase a house. So you can't just like form a free company, nobody's in it, and then go try to buy a house that way. And then if you're in a free company, that has a house, that rule applies to you. So you can't, uh, you know, that, that counts as your free company house. I would assume that if you leave, that rule no longer applies. Uh, it seems like they're really kind of thought through the system. So I'd love to know what your guys' thoughts regarding this housing uh, situation and, and these updates are gonna be the right updates. So they tease some adjustments to the achievement system. I know I think Chris is gonna be particularly excited about this. They uh, talk about uh, they're gonna update the UI and the system overall, but that's not coming for 4.2. So it's a little tease probably for 4.3 or later. It's really good because there's been a lot of people who've wanted the achievement system redone to help encourage replay. And Chris has talked about this like extensively, like do things in different and interesting ways for achievements, uh, you know, that help drive and challenge players, right? You know, imagine running, uh, you know, an extreme mode without a, you know, 
uh, a body piece because that's so heavily statted weighted is that difficult. And so we don't know specifically what's happening, but he did talk about trying to uh, find and use achievements as a way to also encourage uh, replay of old content in new and different ways. So we'll have to wait and see about that. So personally, I actually kind of found this a little bit disappointing. The Jade Stoa is going to be available right when the game goes live. So that's going to be normal and extreme, meaning it seems like the Jade Stoa is just off there on the side. It's not a part of the main scenario. So it doesn't seem like the main scenario is really going to have us dealing with primals anymore. And I don't know if that's going to always be the case, but it was my hope that, um, that it did get put back into the story. That was actually kind of my only issue that I had with Heaven's Word, and while the, the quests were definitely tighter, the storyline was definitely tighter, it, you know, not having it tied in with the, uh, <laughs> with the primals kind of made me, they're kind of forgettable. They're just, they're over there, there's something to do, as opposed to, like, Lakshmi and uh, <laughs> Susano, who are, they are weaved into the story, and thus I, I have more connection with Bismarck and with Ravana and Lakshmi and Susano than I have with, with any of the Warring Triad, and I'm hoping that's not the case here. Uh, with Biako, but at the end of the day, well, I guess we'll have to wait and see. So then he goes in to start talking about a high level battle system adjustments. Some role adjustments are being had uh, to all. So Diversion is getting uh, an update, going to increase in, po or, you know, I guess increase in its ability to <laughs> not have you rip hate off the tank. But for the most part, Red Mage, Samurai, Bard, Dragoon, Ninja, not getting any changes. He mentioned those that kind of almost was like, oh, wait, were they changing these? No, they're pretty much set in stone. But then he goes into, obviously, Monk is getting some changes. It seems like it's getting faster, trying to time their abilities more to be synergized with uh, their, you know, their buffs and things like that. Then we've got uh, adjustments to the tanks. It appears that he said, like, the Paladin's damage, you know, uh, isn't increasing. So it, this could be a translation issue, whether it's going down or if it's staying the same. But Warrior and Dark Knight are getting buffed in damage. And there's more adjustments coming to Warrior than specifically to Dark Knight. But obviously, we're going to have to wait into the full details of the patch notes uh, for that to happen. Same thing as it goes with healers. So he talks a little bit about Scholar and the ability Exo is going to get a nice change. So right now Exo has a 45 second, uh, you know, I believe 45 second uh, cooldown where you put it on a target and if they fall below 50%, it, it uses it. And if they don't, it goes away and it feels wasted. Now, even if it's not used within that time, uh, it, it, after like it times out, it will use. So it, no matter what, it's going to be there uh, for you, whether you need it in an emergency or even if like if they're at 60% and they've never fallen below that 50% mark, this is great because then it's like, oh, cool, boom, heal, and then there you go. So I, I'm excited about that change. That's one of the greatest tools I, I really appreciate about the Scholar, and so I'm happy to see that change for XO. So Machinist is actually getting some buffs and a slight nerf. So Hypercharge is losing 1% uh, you know, of its damage, but everything else is going to be buffed on the machinist. So overall, they're gonna have a DPS increase, which is interesting to see. He, he apologized for the, the, the nerf to hypercharge, uh, losing just 1%. So it's, I guess obviously there's a there's a lot surrounding that. I'm still personally learning how to play machinist. So I, you know, I'm not that invested in the regards of like, oh, 1% on a hypercharge. Um, but you know, <laughs> let me know if you're a machinist and you don't like that change, but it's going to be interesting to see because it seems like everything's going to be going up machinist wise, potency wise for there. So here is where I think things got really exciting for me, uh, especially as we start to say goodbye to 1.0 systems, elemental properties, elemental uh, resistances, anything a part of your character gone. Um, that is going away, but it seems like there's going to be an elemental system. That's a part of Eureka where you attune to a specific element in that regards. He also said that there probably might even be a leveling down system in Eureka, but he's still debating on that himself, which is disappointing, I guess, because it's like at this point, <laughs> I would hope that that would be set in stone, but I guess they're going to be making adjustments up to the release of it. Now, Eureka is not with 4.2, it's with 4.25, which you can expect usually about five weeks after 4.2, so sometime probably in early March that we're going to see this. So it's it's really good to see uh, that this system is going away. Yoshi P guarantees that no one is going to feel uh, its, its dismissal. Uh, items that are related to it, Matera that is uh, related to it, all of these things that relate to elemental you know resistances, it's gone. And it doesn't necessarily, it, it really has been just like, why does this even exist? It doesn't really make that big of a difference, uh, even if a difference at all. So <laughs> uh, it's good because I think at the end of the day, this is just one more uh, 1.0 system that just was here 
and it has since just really fallen, you know, completely out of favor and or use. So from that perspective, obviously one we'll wonder what other 1.0 systems remain that might, you know, get the axe at some point in the future. I'm still betting that 5.0 sees the full removal of classes altogether. But at the end of the day, I know that is a lot of work, so we'll have to wait and see how that goes. But let me know what you guys think about the elemental weaknesses or the resistances themselves being removed. I mean, it's cool that it's uh, being removed, but I'm really interested to see how uh, it plays into Eureka, uh, especially because that system, people were even commenting, like, is this Final Fantasy 11 in 14? Is this going to be this hardcore, grindy, uh, you know, system? He did say that Eureka is designed for uh, either four to eight players to, to participate. So you can, uh, it seems like the, the smallest you want to go is four, uh, the largest you go is eight. And then he says you can 1v1 mobs, which really makes me and reminds me of 11, where like it was one-on-one -on -one solo, and that was I was always tough. So it'll be neat to see how this plays out. Uh, the more that they tease us for the Eureka, the more uh, excited I get, and the more, you know, I guess interesting, you know, it can be. I really hope that it's successful. The, the failure of the diadem, um, you know, is always it still like <laughs> burns uh, deep within my soul. <laughs> Uh, I hope we don't have a repeat of that, but I really can't wait to see more of that. But they didn't show off anything related to Eureka. This was just a little brief note tied into the elemental resistances being completely removed. So at this point, he touches on the performance actions. Uh, basically, they're adding in four uh, <laughs> instruments. They have the harp, the, p the grand piano, the uh, flute, and the guitar. And so this is, or the steel guitar, as they say. This is really cool. Like, he kind of showed it off. It seems like a really cool system. And they're also adding in a setting. So if you don't want to hear it or whatever, if you're out in the world and you're like, oh, I really want to enjoy the music, but this guy's playing and I'm, I'm crafting right here, you can turn down, uh, you know, other characters' sound effects, essentially the performance actions and other things. So that, I think that's a good quality of life adjustment. And I'm interested. I'm really, I, I'm not a musician. <laughs> um, by any stretch of the imagination, I'm really cool to see them put this stuff in here. And I'm just wondering, like, at what point is somebody going to write an original piece of work uh, <laughs> in the game? And then it, that goes, uh, <laughs> it becomes a song on YouTube. I don't know. Um, but for the most part, I'm really excited to see them continue to invest in these interesting and weird areas within the game. So uh, they showed off a lot of housing items, hedges and things like that, and then diving right then into the feast updates. Now, they've covered this on the posts. Uh, they've covered this on the website. We've talked about it, uh, you know, regarding kind of, you know, just the general rule changes, but they kind of spent some time running around the new map in the Crystal Tower. It's very, you know, very spherical with various walls. Uh, it looks impressive. Obviously, calling time looks really cool with the effects that, that, that are there. I'm excited to see that they're continuing to invest in new maps. Uh, for the feast, but it wasn't there wasn't a lot of information. He does talk about you know teams a little bit, and again we've talked about teams. So all this information has been covered. They're just kind of running around showing off the new map. So nothing like revolutionary regarding uh, the feast in and of itself uh, from that perspective. But uh, you know we do know about those changes, and those are uh, I am actually personally looking forward to the feast changes with 4.2. And then aside from inventory, and he did forget to show off the Chocobo uh, saddlebag, but then remembered at the, at, usually at the right at the, at the tail end of it. And it looks really, uh, really quite like a cool system. Um, he dives in then into the glamor. And there is so much here, guys. There's so much to the new glamor system. Uh, it is just mind boggling. You get your glamor, you know, prisms or your, or your, your plates essentially. And then you can apply that to any of your jobs. You don't have to include a weapon, so you can just apply it to job, to job, to job. Individually deer, uh, deer guying, <laughs> deer guying, guying, uh, dying gear. <laughs> Can't speak this morning. Uh, you know, applying to each. Now, whenever you save the set, that's when it actually uses the deer, the, the die. And that I, I'm really excited about because they can just go and you can have your gear sets and you can apply your, your, your plate or your, you know, your uh, glamour set to each. Now he says that they're still working on that. So that specific thing isn't coming in 4.2 but it looks so easy to apply your glamour so he just shows it off just like oh here i am apply apply <laughs> apply boom 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 and it doesn't use any items to do so so that part of that economy you know obviously is going away and whether that you know i'm sorry if you've been making all your money off of glamour prisms doesn't look like that's going to be a big thing um going forward but this seems like it's just a huge quality of life a great way to build out these 
these sets and, and go from there. Now, they are limiting it to 200 items within your Glamour dresser. So what? how do you build your Glamours? You pull from these 200. But the other thing is, and this is the exciting thing, is that it's those 200 and your armoire. So you have an armoire both in your end room or if you have a house and you have one, and you can store all these different items in it. And they show that off. It looks like it's getting a couple of updates, at least you know from the last time I actually used the armoire. And that's great. So you have the 200 and then you have all, all your items in the armoire, which is usually a lot of seasonal stuff. A lot of glamour stuff ends up in there at some point. So it look, that that's continually expanding. They're continually adding uh, in the ways that you can store those items there as well. So that that's actually a big change. So it's more than 200. And who knows, they'll probably expand on that at some point in the future. But in the glamour chest, they show it off in the in room. It has a really cool animation. It talks about how you put items in there, uh, how you manage that. And I think for me, that's gonna help really reduce my inventory overall so there's gonna be a lot of things that I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna hopefully build if, if glamour is the true end game it looks like they're really investing in making it uh, making that collection of it and the use of it and applying of it much more simple now one of the cool things about this is that they're adding in a weekly glamour challenge there is a NPC in the gold saucer who is going to give you a theme and then you can apply and win MGP once a week based off of that. So th there seems not only to be the quality of life, but they're also building in something and rewarding players who want to have fun and create uh, unique uh, sets also based off of themes. So um, I, I would love to know what you guys are thinking when it comes to Glamour. This is something that Chris and I have talked about what we were hoping it, it, it before, and it seems like they've obviously changed the name from Commode, uh, especially in the English version. So this is gonna be something, I think it's just gonna, it's gonna play over real well. I can't actually wait to go hands-on. It seems very in-depth. It seems like they really kind of thought through a lot of scenarios. And that's a good thing. But again, let me know what you think. Are you going to be a big, are you into Glamour? Are you not? Is this something that's either going <laughs> to uh, make it easier on you or get you invested in the first place? I have dabbled in it. It's uh, <laughs> it's never been my big forte, but I'm excited that I can actually build these things out and apply because if I'm going to spend the time, it just makes it easy. And that's also going to have a huge impact on inventory, players inventory. We're not going to be carrying around all these pieces in case we get a new better piece and have to re-Glamour. That's been a whole mess up to this point but anyway guys that's that pretty much wraps up the highlights for the producers uh letter live 41 the the date which we already talked about is the 30th of january um so to confirm january 30th the the trailer should be live on youtube right now i'll try to include a link uh in the description below i'm gonna have to probably rewatch that and i might come back uh, with some additional thoughts if i if i gather anything out of the trailer that i originally didn't see but anyway guys for work to game, my name is Brian. Thanks so much for watching this video. We hope to see you soon, but until then, I hope you have a fantastic day and take care. Hey, it's me. I'm in Chris's office. He doesn't know it, but we've got other videos for you to check out right here. And we've got the vlog down there in the corner. Plus, we've got some contact information and you can totally subscribe to the channel that way as well. So we hope you do. We hope to see you in our next video, but until then, take care.